all-time winningest coach in conference history. You and I talked with Coach Ham earlier today. He made it clear to us that his coaching span clears close to 50 years he's been doing this along the sidelines, but yet hasn't seen much like what his team has been going through to start this season. Edie to jump it up against Naheem McLeod. And Purdue controls, and this will be Braden Smith, the freshman, to hand it. And take a peek at the starting lineups for Purdue. Gillis, Lawyer, Smith, Edie, and Morton, who's their glue guy, and this is Morton handling. Important for Florida State to get off to a good start, especially on the defensive end of the floor. Lawyer buries that one. We talked with Matt Painter earlier and asked him the difficult question as to who is your best shooter? And it took him a while to come up with someone, but I do believe he said Warrior was that guy. The trying for the lob there, couldn't connect with Fletcher. And Purdue back the other way. And good hands right there by Mills. And he puts it in. And that's Florida State basketball, turning defense into offense. Caleb Mills with great hands to come up with the steal and the easy bucket. And for Florida State's leading scorer, a good way to get started. Now one of the things to keep an eye on for Florida State, they like to play high intensity. They normally like to play a lot of guys. Coach Hamilton a bit limited right now in that regard. The miss by Lawyer. Here comes Florida State. And now the Boilermakers back the other way. Just get going here in Tallahassee. Edie with a kick out. And that's out of bounds. It'll be Florida State basketball. And Florida State fortunate. Lawyer has missed back-to-back -back wide open threes. And we talked about his shooting prowess. So Florida State fortunate. But that, those are not shots they want to continue to give up and allow Lawyer to have because he's not going to miss open. Yeah, 39%. And even Matt Painter said that maybe doesn't really tell the story of how good a shooter he is. Agreed. He normally doesn't get looks like this, these open ones. He's normally shooting contested because he's at the top of the scouting report when it comes to perimeter players for the Boilermakers. Jumper short. Morton rebounds. And Purdue on the move. And Morton threw it away as the takeaway with Green. And Green stepped on the baseline, out of bounds. It's a turnover, and it'll go the other way. Uncharacteristic turnover by Morton. But for Florida State, it's kind of par for the course. That's what they've done more than anyone or any of the Florida State teams as of late on the season. Florida State with 105 assists to 115 turnovers. Difficult to win basketball games like that over two minutes in. I think that the other thing we anticipate with Purdue having the basketball would be to isolate Edie down on that low block. And that's what Florida State's going to do. They're going to try to make it difficult on the perimeter for the guys to handle the basketball. And they've done a great job with that early, continuing to turn over Purdue, which is a team that normally handles the basketball very well. Fletcher with a nice step in to knock it away. And yeah, the Seminoles an opportunity to take the lead. Florida State off to just a 1-7 and seven start. And that jumper will go for Green and the Knowles lead. And you see, once again, Florida State, when they score, they're going to go to the 94 feet of pressure and force Purdue's guards to have to handle that pressure to try to limit the opportunities for Edie to touch the basketball. Sets the screen high. Lawyer from the free throw line. And he's fouled. And I believe they got Matthew Cleveland. And one of the things we talked Matt, with Matt Painter about earlier today, with Florida State's pressure, and oftentimes with switching on ball screens, etc., they force you to have to make individual plays. And that's going to be the goal of the Seminoles in this game. Instead of giving... For due opportunities to just sit back and no pressure on the basketball, throw it inside the Edie. They're going to try to heat up the guards to see if they can get them out of their comfort zone. The lawyer one out of two. Edie had his hands on it. Seminoles the other way. Fletcher, the Kentucky transfer as he swings it.
And Green books one from Dean. And Green can do that. He's the one guy that's had some success shooting the basketball for the Seminoles this year. Two good looks for him already. That one for three. That's his 20th three of the year. It leads the team. He was shooting 40% from behind the three-point line coming in. Gillis wide open. And that was halfway down. And rolls out. Seminoles by three and the ball. Gillis tracks down the miss. Here comes Purdue. Smith wide open. Well, they've had some open looks at it, just haven't been able to hit them. Yeah, and you're talking about great shooters getting those open looks as well. Off balance, soft touch there from Matthew Cleveland. But one of the things you see from Florida State, and this is Florida State basketball, they have four guys. If they rebound the basketball, they can push it, oftentimes putting your defense in compromising situations. But Matthew Cleveland looking to the bench, asking for a sub, and this is where it gets interesting for Leonard Hamilton. Gillis able to hit as he answers. Not sure what defensive assignment that was. However, I know none of it was to allow Gillis to have a wide open three on the other side. Seminoles in a rough stretch right now after a 1-7 start and back-to-back -back games playing Purdue and Virginia. Green catch and shoot, and that missed everything. And time out on the court. The Seminoles off to a good start. Florida State, a two-point advantage. And they've got some good deep shooting. Darren Green knocking it down from beyond the three-point line. And speaking of threes, that's really all Purdue has done so far is trying to shoot the three. Yeah, Purdue unable to get the basketball inside to Zach Eady early in this game. Give Florida State a lot of credit for the pressure they're putting on the perimeter players, making it difficult to feed the post. David Jenkins Jr. has checked in. That's him with the basketball as well as Caleb First. So Trey Kaufman Wren for Purdue. And this is the formula for Florida State basketball. The question becomes how long that can they sustain this? Without the yeah. numbers they normally play with, do they have enough guys to be able to apply this type of pressure for 40 minutes? Yeah, and early on in this season, the answer to that question is no. They have not been able to play the way they want to play. They just don't have enough guys. Nice block. That one rejected by Green out of bounds. Four in the shot clock for new basketball. And that's one of the areas of Florida State. They're going to switch defensively, and you see Green just picking up, helping out a teammate who was beaten off the dribble and coming up with the emphatic block. Horton inbounds, and John Gaffney said, step on the sideline. A turnover out of bounds, Florida State ball. Yeah, and the fourth turnover already on Purdue, which is uncharacteristic of their guards. They haven't seen this type of pressure yet this season. And we have to mention Purdue plays with a young backcourt. It's Tom House handling. And now a feed down low. And the Noles moving the basketball. And that one. Purdue eventually, as it was saved in, goes back the other way. So 14 to go here first half. And Florida State leading it by a couple. And a bucket inside, Kaufman Wren. In the first two-point field goal attempt for the Boilermakers in the game, with over six minutes having been played. And stepping on the baseline is Trey Kaufman Wren, so out of bounds. The double came and it produced the steal, but... Kaufman Wren on the other end of the floor, patient, the pump fake, able to finish over the top. 
And that's what the way Purdue wants to be able to play. They want to go inside out. Give Florida State credit for making that difficult for them early in this game. You saw a lot of Purdue out in Portland. If you were to sort of boil it down and give us sort of the bullet points on what makes Matt Painter's team so good, what would you say? Well, Zach Eady, let's start with the big fella in the middle who's one of the best players nationally, not just in the Big Ten, but one of the best players in the country. And the attention that he draws opens up so many opportunities for his teammates on the outside. And normally, guys who are really good shooters, they're shooting 45.9% from the field and 34% from three overall. So that's a pretty good shooting team. And especially when you've got a big fella like that in the middle that you can play around. Got that last foul on Trey Kaufman Wren. Caleb Mills here, the transfer from Houston, leading the goals in scoring for the, the second straight year. Worley kick out, Mills will try. And a fight for the loose ball off of first, and it ends up with Jenkins. First little jump hook. They got Caleb first for going over the back. A foul on the lefty. But for those who think that Purdue is just about Zach Eady, they would be mistaken. Caleb first can get the job done on the block as well. He would be a starter pretty much anywhere else. He just happens to be playing behind Zach Eady. But Caleb first, a double-double against Duke, 11 points, 10 rebounds, is a big-time performer as well. Leonard Hamilton talked to us about how he's hurt them in the past. And he's got multiple skill sets, right? You could actually play him with Edie if you want to. Absolutely. He can shoot the basketball from beyond the three-point arc and handle it past it with a very highly talented recruit coming to Purdue. Chandler Jackson is checked in. This is Jackson. Missed the first few games of a broken thumb. See if he has that right thumb taped up. Gets into the paint, flips it up. Little strong. Newman the rebound. It's lost the handle, and here come the Seminoles. Speed inside, and that one just short as Deontay Green couldn't convert. That's been a struggle for the Seminoles this year. Of course, they're going to continue to turn you over, but if you don't take advantage of those turnovers on the other end of the floor, your offense can struggle at times, and that's where the issue has been for the Noles. A 9-9 game here in the early going, and it's our under-12 timeout. Back here in Tallahassee, B-Week continues. Whoa, is that real speed, the flossing? Okay. I, I believe it is, but you normally don't see someone of that age doing it. No, it's a good point. <laughs> well, the defense has been living here so far. 9-9 here at the Tucker Center. John Chompy, Corey Alexander, 11.59 to go here first half. Now, Matt Painter's team had some trouble adjusting and he admitted as much. He said it usually against Florida State takes us close to a half to kind of get assimilated to what they're doing. I mean, it's it's intense the way they come after you. It really is and it's simply about the 94 feet of pressure and Leonard Hamilton told us he's watched film on them and was surprised to see so many teams just allowing Purdue to sit there with no pressure on the ball, throwing the ball inside to Zach Eady. You have, don't have a chance of guarding him that way. They get it into Eady this time, looking for an outlet, and he gets it to Kaufman Wren. Back to Eady. And that'll go. Case in point, yeah. if he catches the basketball and you play behind him, you are at his mercy. Part of the reason why he shoots close to 70% from the field. Yeah, it's just kind of mad, right? I mean, he's 7-4. Hard to contest that. Loose ball inside. And a foul. Good work by Chandler Jackson. In the underneath, out of bounds play, out of the timeout, Matt Painter wanted to make sure he gets Zach Eady a touch. His first field goal attempt of the day. And again, it's so difficult to defend that. Great touch at seven foot four. He dwarfs 
normal big man when you consider the guys in the competition he's playing against. Gets the first. And goes set the lineup. Number 21, Cameron. Cam Fletcher back in. Amber tied up. And every Florida State score gives them an opportunity to set up their pressure to see if they can heat up the Purdue guards in the backcourt. Ryan Waddell into the game. That's him right there, a foul on the floor. Dad, Matt was a thousand point scorer and Matt Painter's teammate at Purdue. We were talking about Matt Painter and his playing days at Purdue. And his senior year, 92-93, they started out 6-0. Only got better when he left, though. The next year, they started out 14-0. <laughs> Being inside, and Kaufman Wren absorbs a contact that he's fouled. Matt Painter, a guy known for being able to coach offense very well. And well, he's one of those dudes that he likes some of the analytics. They also do stuff where they give potential recruits personality tests to try and figure out who's going to fit in their system. And for the most part, they've done a pretty good job of getting guys that, that it with their culture. Edie, rebound, rolls it home. And the soft touch. And the one thing, Zach Edie averages five offensive rebounds a game. That's the astronomical number. When you think about it, five offensive boards a game out of his 12 rebounds. And he has the ability just to shoot over top of everyone, but the soft touch that he's displayed twice on the jump hook. That one a little strong. Smith tracks it down. That's Newman. And that missed all of it. Out of bounds. And it'll go the other way. And right in front of Matt Painter. And, Boog, you talked about Matt Painter known for being such a great offensive coach. But how about this Purdue team? They have yet to allow an opponent to shoot over 42% from the field. And you go back and look at the teams that they've already played. Marquette, Duke, Gonzaga, West Virginia. West Virginia, I believe, was the only team that shot over 40% against them this season. Purdue by a couple. And Worley picking up Braden Smith. Edie had really good position. He sealed off McLeod in that spot, and then Edie had it stripped away. There's a rule with bigs, but you can see their numbers on the front of their jersey. They should get the basketball. When Zach Edie's case, you don't have to see the whole 1-5. If you see one of the numbers, throw it. Smith couldn't hit. Tip. Edie tips again, and the little point guard comes away with it. And then Waddell gets rejected. Straight on from Cleveland. Because it's been a struggle, I won't say take it off, but outside of that, you got to take that one off. You got to call that or something, dude. You can't just shoot it from the free throw line <laughs> and go to straight second. glass. <laughs> but it's been an offensive struggle this year for, for, the, for the Noles, so we'll allow it. Oh! Edie throws it down, plus one. And more importantly, the emotion after he finishes. Now think about it, on the last possession, 
inside the arena. You can hear the commentary after the block shot. Zach Eady making sure that there will be no conversation after this one. And if there is any, it's going to come from the guys in black. I love it. Zach Eady with a little something to say after the finish. Mm -hmm. Point seven points per game and then a dozen rebounds per game and five double doubles already. Anyone you can think of, and that's absolutely, the, the free throw, the ability to shoot free throws, anyone you can think of right now ahead of Zach Eady in the National Player of the Year? I don't think so. I, I think he's got to be the front runner right, right now. Now, look at that. Fletcher. Rivini closing on him, knocks it down. It's a big three, and we're tied. A big bucket by Cameron Fletcher, knocking down the three. But the fact that Zach Eady at 7 4 sprints out to try to contest that shot says a lot about the way Matt Painter coaches this team up. Morton was trying to find the point guard, Braden Smith, Florida State. Deflects it out of bounds, and with 12 of the shot clock, it's Purdue basketball. Tied at 16, Leonard Hamilton's got to be happy with at least the first 11-plus minutes from his team. I believe so. You haven't had a lot of action from Zach Eady. He's been successful when he's been able to get his hands on the basketball, but Florida State's done a great job getting in the passing lanes, the deflections, the steals, and, of course, the turnovers. Eady's got seven. Hit on McLeod, and a little strong. Loose ball goes to the Knowles, and a chance to take the lead. And that jump put wouldn't fall. Cleveland puts it in, and, and one. That's the effort from Matthew Cleveland. Leonard Hamlet has been looking for last year's ACC Sixth Man of the Year making plays without having to have the basketball in his hands. The offensive rebound, the putback, and the lead for the Knowles. So Cleveland at the line and a chance to complete the three-point play. This kid was a big-time recruit, number 30 in the ESPN 100. I mean, talk about a top 30 recruit. You're expecting big impact, and he's made it, as you mentioned. The sixth man of the year. It's something Florida State for whatever reason is done well, I guess because they they foster that depth and playing a lot of guys. And over the last five or six years, it's been the Seminole of the Year oh, award, right? Which man of the year in ACC. Eighty inside, two more. He's got nine. And we got a flop. Well, I'm no, sorry, no longer a warning. It is a flop, which will be a Class B technical foul. One free throw for Florida State. And Smith talking to Jeffrey Anderson, letting him know there was contact on that. He tried to get the call in the backcourt. Green will have the one free throw. I like that they're getting this out of the game personally. Just I think that it, it, it started to become a thing where guys, shooters are shooting and being almost taught to, to fall after they shoot. And then guys are, you know, getting into kind of flopping over on the defensive side. I agree wholeheartedly. I'm glad that this is in the And again, I like the fact that it's only one free throw. It does not count as a personal foul on the person that gets it. But it does make you cognizant of making sure that you don't do it again. Yeah. Because you are giving away potential points. Left side, Morley. Gillis just out efforting the Seminoles. And then back the other way, and it'll be Florida State basketball. Zach Eady showing some emotion. Hasn't had a lot of opportunities, but when he gets them, he's taking advantage of them. The big fella finishing on the interior, letting his emotion show. But Matthew Cleveland won. Look ahead to the big matchups in the ACC Big Ten Challenge tonight. All right, you guys look forward to it. Under eight to go here first half at Florida State. 
with a two point advantage. Yes, still to come UNC and Indiana, Michigan State, Notre Dame, and later on, BC and Nebraska. That was a tough loss for Florida State, losing to a Nebraska team picked to finish last in the Big Ten. And that was in Orlando. Yeah, surprising. And again, when you think about Florida State and what they've been able to do over the past decade with Leonard Hamilton, been a surprising start to this season, to say the least. Giddy inside absorbs the contact. Bert Smith coming over. It'll be on Deontay Green, Edie to the stripe. Zach Edie made a huge jump last year from freshman to sophomore year, making an even bigger jump this year. He is big, 7'4", 290. 76% from the line so far this year, and in his career, almost 70%. That's pretty darn good. I mean, most big guys, for whatever reason, whether it's the hands or whatever, aren't usually great at the line. 70% is out of play. That is a luxury simply because for a guy that you're going to feature on the offensive end of the floor who's going to see it so much, you can't afford just to go foul him. He's going to draw enough fouls just on his action alone. And when you put him at the free throw, free throw line, if he's making 76% of his free throws, that, those are great opportunities for Purdue. So, and again, he's going to always draw fouls simply because he's such a factor in the offensive end. Pull up there, Edie tipping it, and Edie pulls it down. And Jackson couldn't get it to fall. Well, Purdue shooting just 35% from the floor, so the Florida State defense has been good. But I think they just got the cloud. For the foul as Edie hit the deck. I'm not sure if McLeod was trying to convince the officials that that was going to be a hook and hold. But you see, as they lock arms, it's McLeod actually hooking Edie. Just not a smart play for McLeod. I mean, at that point, you're the one who got your arms tangled. All you have to do is put your hand straight up. You're talking yeah. two seven-footers. And that's giving away a foul that's going to be necessary for you to stay on the floor. Edie short. And a rebound for Florida State, Cam Fletcher. Just under six and a half to go, first half. And how about the beginning of the season for Purdue coming off back-to-back -back wins over Gonzaga and Duke. They're six and all. And what's often lost in that conversation is they also beat a very good West Virginia team to start it out. West Virginia actually played them closer than Gonzaga or Duke. Oh, Edie to follow on the Smith miss as he throws it down. And Zach Edie continues to make an impact. He's got 13. And he's already got three offensive rebounds. We talked about he averages five offensive boards a game. 30 already in six games this season. And that's often the case turns him into a bucket when he gets his hands on the basketball. 30-second timeout. Back after this. Purdue by two. John Chambi, Corey Alexander, the offensive glass. I mean, look, you isolate him on the block, yeah, but he, he can go get misses as you were touching on him. We, we've seen it here tonight. But oftentimes, if you front Zach Eady, that means when a shot goes up, he now has inside position. So he's going to be able to get to the glass and at seven foot four, he doesn't have to go very far to be able to tip dunk that back. I feel like at times we've seen Florida State, they're trying to front him and then sneak a guy from behind if he successfully catches the pass and maybe try and knock it away. But he does a great job of keeping the basketball high. So even when you send that help defender, oftentimes it doesn't matter because at seven four and he keeps the basketball high enough, the, the second defender won't be able to affect him. Two by two. Cleveland jumper got it. They were tied. And nice play by Matthew Cleveland there, getting to his spot and being patient to make sure no help defenders around, going to the turnaround jumper. This one's been tight the whole way. Biggest lead of the game, Florida State by five. 
And more importantly, Florida State hasn't had to play a, a fast enough pace to really tire out their guys. So this is something that may be sustainable for the Knowles moving into the second half. Green will try and hit. That's a confident shot right there. Green raising up. And we you know the logo here at the Donald Tucker Center is rather large. Yes. But still logo the Logo's the logo. <laughs> Point game now as Seminoles come back the other way. Nice, that one ended up right in the hands of our stat man, Sean. <laughs> now the fifth turnover for the Seminoles. For Florida State, when you don't shoot it as well, when you're not offensively a strong team, you can't afford to turn the basketball over and not get those opportunities. But fortunately on that possession, there's dead ball turnover, which allows them to set their defense. Jenkins being harassed, gives it off to first. Four minutes to go first half, beat in Edie. Looking opposite, and then there's that jump hook. I mean, you're just not stopping that. You're not stopping it, and you know, Florida State is sending the double team, but they're leaving. And when you leave, Zach Eady is smart enough to be able to see that. He knows he's got one on one coverage. Fletcher, a little short. Jenkins gobbles it up. Move it, try for a a back cut there. They isolate Edie. Good look. First ball fake and McLeod the block. They ran it well, but McLeod recovered nicely. Yeah, McLeod did a great job coming to help out a teammate who was in no man's land. And it's fortunate that that wasn't a goaltending call. If you would have seen that a little earlier, someone was hanging. Back here in Tallahassee, John Chomby, Corey Alexander, and number five, Purdue, leading it by a point. Uh, what do you got on this? Watch Darren Green. Well, I think it's a great way for Darren Green not to pick up the foul, grabbing the net so his body doesn't take him into Caleb first. A beautiful find from Zach Eady, but give Naeem McLeod a lot of credit for coming over and being able to come up with that block shot, getting Florida State the basketball back. And not a goal 10 because the ball was not in the air. Because the ball had not been released. If Caleb first shoots that basketball with Green hanging onto the net, that is the automatic goal 10 for affecting the rim during the shot. 26-25 Purdue, Florida State looking to inbound. That shot skimming the front edge of the rim and then Newman gets fouled. Foul number eight, so they'll march it down to the other end. And Purdue normally shoots great from the free throw line. Not great so far in this game. Only four for eight from the charity strike. Newman gets the first. Coming up next over on ESPN and the ESPN app at 9.15 Eastern. It's the 24th annual ACC Big Ten Challenge, and it rolls on. Number 18, North Carolina, taking on number 10, Indiana, at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. It's another Sonic blockbuster. And another split at the free throw line for the Boilermakers coming into the game, shooting close to 79% from the free throw line, and only 50% thus far here tonight. Off the glass and good as Green comes up with the bucket. He's got 11. Yeah, Green showing that he's more than just a three-point shooter, putting the ball on the deck, getting to the rim, and a nice finish off the glass. So he's right about at his season average here tonight as we close in on two and a half to go. And they go possession arrow. It belongs to Florida State. Darren Green 
Jr. Going to be guarded heavily at the three-point line because he's had success. This time, getting his shoulders past the defender, going off the glass to tie the game for the Nolan. 27 apiece. Newman will try and hit. Confident shot from Newman right in front of the Florida State bench. Has something to say to the bench and I believe is teed up. After he knocks down the three. Newman knocks down the three, immediately looks back, has something to say to the Florida State bench right in front of official Jeffrey Anderson. And again, if you're going to say something, you got to know where the officials are. I mean, to me, the funny part of the entire exchange was Jeffrey Anderson makes the call, looks at Matt Painter, you know, kind of like, is there something you'd like to say to me? And Matt Painter looked him right in the eye and went, no, you're right, thumbs up. <laughs> Matt Painter understands it. He's yeah, he a does. player. He, he was a player. He was a competitor. And he also knows that, hey, <laughs> you got to know have better court awareness. Know if you're going to say something to the bench, make sure the officials aren't right beside you to hear it. Jackson over Newman. Loose ball. Jackson gets it back. Another loose ball. Tipped in the air. And eventually, it looked like Hoffman Wren had it for a second, and he ended up absorbing the contact, and he's fouled. But each and every one of these fouls against the Seminoles ends up as a trip to the free throw line for the Boilermakers, and both teams did a great job getting after the basketball, trying to come up with the 50-50 ball, but it ends up being an opportunity for the Boilermakers at the line. Saw Leonard Hamilton and his top assistant Stan Jones having a chat there with Chandler Jackson. Kaufman Wren knocks it down. Kaufman Wren, another one of those role players for the Boilermakers. Purdue has nine players averaging over four points per game and ten players who average over ten minutes per game. So we talk about depth. We're used to seeing that before the state, but Matt Painter definitely has it. For sure. Time and done such a good job recruiting Indiana. And Kaufman ran a guy that falls into that category. Leonard Hamilton was envious of Matt Painter's <laughs> recruiting of Indiana. He looks like he pretty much has the run of the state right now. Green probing. And they get the trap. Cam Corrin. Corrin just in a bit of a rush on that possession. Getting an opportunity. Corrin, the 6'10", Brock, Brock yeah, will sit down and Naheem McLeod will check back in. Yeah, just started to dance a little early before the music started playing. I get it. Freshman playing in a big game against one of the best players in the country. Smith picked up his dribble, he found Edie. Morton, a pretty open look. That hasn't been Morton's strength all the season. He's done everything great, but except for shooting. Green gets another. Speaking of strength, that is definitely his strength. There, Green knocks down his third three-pointer here on the evening. He's got 16. And the foul on Jackson as Morton hit the floor. And this is Florida State basketball. Jalen Worley getting out in transition. Darren Green finding the corner, knocking down the three ball to tie the game at 32. Darren Green Jr., the transfer from 
Central Florida, UCF. He led the Knights in scoring last year with a little over 13 a game. Tells from North Carolina. So here's Ethan Morton at the line. Morton, a junior from Butler, Pennsylvania. I got to give a shout out to his high school basketball coach, Matt Clement, former major league pitcher, Matt Clement. Had a really nice long career and was a very good pitcher, but he's a hoops junkie. And that was Ethan Morton's coach in high school. I like him. We had another famous baseball hoops junkie in the building yeah. earlier today, huh? David Ross, the manager of the Cubs. Connecting with Matt Painter is a huge Cubs fan. David Ross who lives here in Tallahassee. Two-point game. It's been a good one here in the first half. And there's Edie getting into it defensively. First collects the tip. And Purdue will hold for the last shot, leading by two. Uh, will they? Mistake there. They were supposed to. I'm not sure the freshman knew the clock. Matt Painter not happy with that. <laughs> He's having the conversation. Yeah, Matt Painter just looked at Braden Smith and just said, come on, man. You got to know. And again, it's a it's a freshman mistake. Braden Smith, of course, hailing from the state of Indiana, played high school basketball at a very high level. Not sure if they had a shot clock and not sure if he was in that situation before. He always had the green light. Lecture. And we'll go to the break. Purdue on top at the half, the number five team in the country on the road and leading it, but just by two. Let's send it back to the studio now. Just a game. Florida State turned him over eight times in that first half. You know, Matt Painter would like to see that change in the second half. And what Leonard Hamilton would like to see change is more points off of those turnovers. Only four points off of those eight turnovers for the Seminoles. Buffalo, Buffalo. Edie inside okay. off the glass and good. He has 17. But one of the things you see with Edie, he recognizes, he looks first to see where's the double team coming from? Is it coming? If you're going to play me one-on-one, -on -one, I'm going to attack you. But he also knows how to find the right guy. Cleveland and one. And Matthew Cleveland will go to the line and a chance to finish off a three-point play. That's the second answer to a Zach Edie bucket that Matthew Cleveland has had in this game. And the second time as well, respectively, that it's an opportunity for an and one, a three-point play for Cleveland. Matt Painter talked to us earlier about the fact that they tried to get involved in recruiting Matthew Cleveland, both of his parents, engineers from Georgia Tech. He was selling the engineering program from Purdue. <laughs> Said they couldn't get far, though. Smith pushes into the front court. Purdue by a point. Just getting started here, second half. It's been a rough beginning of the year for Florida State, but here tonight, they've acquitted themselves quite nicely against one of the top teams in the country. To the corner, Gillis, ball fake. Gets inside, gets a piece of the paint. And not able to hit Florida State the other way, a chance to take the lead. Green off one foot and book that one. 18 for Darren Green Jr. And Green does a great job recognizing Edie and drop coverage. And as he gets ahead of Steam going at Edie, Edie has to backpedal so he can get that shot off, not giving him a chance to. Gather his balance and block the shot. It's a hard shot. It is, but it's not a runner. Thank you for not saying that. <laughs> Morton off the mark. And Green with another. He is red hot tonight. He's got 21. And playing with confidence. And forgive me, it's not a floater. Thank you for not saying floater. It was a runner. A 
Anderson. And count that for Fletcher Lawyer. Just like to start the game, Lawyer was able to knock down a three to start the scoring for Purdue. Does the same here to begin the second half. Someone's going to have to find a way to cool it off. Darren Green Jr. for the Boilermakers. Fletcher jumper, and that rolls off. Gillis the rebound. Green and Cleveland, they've got 33 of Florida State's 40 points. Lawyer will try, hits another. Doesn't get easier than that for Lawyer. <laughs> he still had the basketball before the State's defenders left him. On that possession, giving him an easy look to regain the lead for the Boilermakers. Corey, Caleb Mills has been quiet in this game. And Caleb Mills has had stretches where he struggled offensively for Florida State. Cam Fletcher comes up with the offensive rebound to put back. But Mills has to, regardless of the offense, continue to defend. Lawyer wide open. And Edie couldn't secure it. Florida State basketball with the lead. Smith, but they don't have numbers. He waits. Right now, you've got to be thinking, I'm going to take the big fella off the dribble. And one. Oh, boy. Great Smith put it on the deck. Ended up on the floor, but he put it home off the glass, and it'll go to the line. But as a guard, when you have the basketball that far away from the basket, and you've got a seven-footer stepping out to guard, so you've got to be thinking aggressively. I'm going to put this ball on the floor. I'm going to the basket. Now, there may be help. I might have to drop it off, but I've got to at least put that level of pressure on the opposing team's defense for disrespecting me by putting a seven-footer on me. It's like having a mouse in the house right. inverted. It, it, it's the, right, it's the reverse <laughs> yes. of the mouse in the house. Yes. Smith rattles it home, Purdue, with a 44-42 advantage. Mills hesitated, Edie rips down the rebound. Try. Edie got a hand on the rebound, but Seminole's the other way. Chance to tie it or take the lead with a three. Fletcher. And McLeod puts it in. A great job by Cam Fletcher sealing and just getting the shot up on the glass. Even though he didn't make it, by Edie coming over to help, gives his teammate an opportunity for the putback. Rejection there by McLeod. Tied at 44, 15 10 to go. St. Seminole is looking to pull off an upset. Purdue with the third biggest climb in a single week in the AP rankings 24 all the way to five. And how about that note? Leonard Hamilton has the most top 25 wins while his team has been unranked in NCAA history, 55 of them, this would fall into that category. So trying for number 56 here tonight. Coach Ham takes a lot of pride in that, and he takes a lot of pride also in taking jobs that other people didn't want. When he took over at Oklahoma State, when he took over at Miami, and then when he took over at Florida State, this was not a very good basketball program, but has built it into a powerhouse not only within the ACC, but a team that you can rely on to make a run in March. A down year this year, but this has become one of the premier programs in the country. Lead inside. And Caleb first able to corral it. They're playing first and Edie together. Smith kicked to the corner. That's first. And Smith able to scramble for the rebound. 
needs some help, gets it off. And Morton. Good look, first inside and puts it in. You see the versatility of Caleb first on that possession, shooting the three and then getting inside, finishing. And that's part of the reason why you can play these two together. And there's Tom House with a much needed three. And all of a sudden, Florida State back in front by a point. But one of the things that Leonard Hamilton does by getting his guys in the first half and giving them some action, they get confidence. And you see House is a much more confident player with that shot here in the second half that we saw in the first half. He's got a little more bounce to his step, especially after he sees one go down. That last foul on Cam Horn. Deontay Green will check in for Cam Fletcher. Deontay Green, more likely, if Florida State had a healthy group, wouldn't have played this season. Just returning after a knee injury in January. but That's too easy right there. Yeah, you know, no need to even talk about that. That was like, that, was like on, <laughs> that felt like on a Nerf hoop. Back in the day, you're in your bedroom, Nerf hoop. <laughs> You know, there are people out there listening that don't have no idea what, no idea what Nerf Hoop I've been is, years which ahead. is sad. It is. It's terrible. Nerf Hoop was probably the most inexpensive entertainment. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Magnificent. Good ball movement. First inside. That would fall. Florida State basketball, Purdue, by a point. And one Take a look at the Edie dunk. One of the reasons why Zach Edie is so efficient is because he's playing on a Nerf hoop at 7-4. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what's the, the, the best part about it? He's a good athlete. Yeah. And the thing is, it's not like he's slow and he can't jump, things like that. He's a relatively good athlete, especially for a guy that's 7 foot four. He's leaving the ground when he dunks the basketball, which makes it even more difficult. It's not as though he's just tiptoe dunking. He didn't start playing basketball until he was 15. Kid from Canada, baseball was really the sport. He was a pitcher and a first baseman. Can you imagine standing at home plate? Well, it's got to feel like he's delivering the ball from about three feet away. Exactly. Randy Johnson right. at a different level. Edie right now directing the offense from the paint. Didn't get the opportunity in the post that he wanted. Smith at the basket puts it in. Marley flips that up. First rebound. Here comes Smith. Purdue by three. Looking to extend the lead. Pass. First with the throwdown off the feed from Braden Smith. Man, that was a beautiful find by Smith. Normally I can see him coming. That one I had no idea where he was going with the basketball. Way down count, rebound grabbed by Newman. Another nice find. And first rattles it home. And just like that, it's an eight-point game. Well, what we've seen, the difference between the level of defensive intensity we saw from Florida State to start the game, pressure on the basketball, it's no longer there here in the second half. And Braden Smith is now out here dropping dimes. John Chambi, Corey Alexander, what's changed here in the second half? The level of pressure on the basketball in the first half Florida State was heating the basketball up. Now there's no pressure on the ball, which allows Smith to be able to find Caleb first after Darren Green falls asleep on the baseline. To start the game, Purdue had five early turnovers. 
to start the second half. Purdue has five assists, no turnovers here in this second half, and part of the reason why they built this lead to eight. Leonard Hamilton talked to us about this earlier today. The level of intensity, the level that they can put out in the first half, because they don't have the numbers, it dies off in the second half. It's hard. It's hard for them to be able to execute their plan, play the way they want to play for the full 40 is really challenging. A 9-0 Purdue run. Caleb First has been at the center of it. He's got seven second half points. Cleveland inside and gets that to go. And most of the work that Matthew Cleveland has done in this game has been off the dribble, attacking the basket. Maybe he needs to be a little hungrier for his opportunities trying to get downhill. Cleveland ends a Florida State drought that was a little over three minutes. Eleven oh one to go. Time out on the court, and we'll take it with them. A number of beautiful passes from Braden Smith. With no defense, you beg to bark the question: Who's on first? <laughs> Thanks for doing that. I appreciate you. Caleb first, former Mr. Basketball of the state of Indiana. Corey Alexander's going to need a moment to himself just to <laughs> drink I, that one in. Listen, I got my baseball that was awesome. tie in here. Yeah. Come on, man. That, that, what better time to use? That was perfect. <laughs> Who's on first? The only thing that would have been better if Terrence Mann was still here. <laughs> we could drop. People will come, Ray. People will most definitely come. <laughs> there you go. Or yeah. well, we could have Mann on first. Then who's on second? Yes. Fallon, I think, on Fletcher. Yes. Cam Fletcher. Pick up his first. Cam Fletcher trying to get in there and get the steal on Jenkins. And Jenkins had a hard time handling the basketball in the first half, so the Knowles will go after him. Edie lost the handle. What do they call it here? Well, I can I can guarantee Zach Eady did not shoot the basketball up to the shot clock. <laughs> wow. They say Florida State basketball. Hey, hey. Hey. trying to cut into the deficit here and Green had been quiet for a bit, able to draw the foul. But I like what Green is doing. When he's attacking on the pick and roll, he continues to make sure he keeps Edie on his heels. Because if Edie's on his toes, recognizing that he's going to pull up and shoot a jump shot, he can gather and go block the shot. But as Green continues to go into his runner, he doesn't allow Edie to be able to gather his balance and affect the shot. Well, the fourth annual Big 12 Big East battle tomorrow night. We got two games for you. The first one's a top seven matchup. Creighton going up against Texas. That'll be a lot of fun. And then Seton Hall traveling to Lawrence to take on Kansas. Big 12 Big East. Both games on ESPN and the ESPN app. And Boog, this is the last year of the ACC Big 10 Challenge. Tonight is actually the last night of yeah. the ACC Big Ten Challenge. 24 years of number of great instant classic games, great basketball over a large span. But we welcome in the era of the ACC SEC Challenge yep. next season. Newman puts it on the floor, and Fletcher charged with his second foul.
Reed Smith has made an impact here in the second half. Getting his teammates more involved. Goes baseline here. And now Newman, shot clock winding down. I haven't said that a lot. Jenkins hoist. And an offensive rebound and a putback makes it Gillis. And that's Purdue basketball. And you mentioned it. Very few opportunities to run the shot clock all the way down, but even when the shot under the stress, the guys in black not giving up on the opportunity, chasing it down for the offensive board in the putback. Jumper wouldn't go. And a foul inside on Purdue. After a strong defensive possession, the Seminoles unable to come out. You see Gillis getting inside position on Green as if he were the defender blocking out and an easy offensive board and put back to extend the lead to eight. I mean, it's interesting. I'd be curious how many shots have been taken. It's usually something I have my eye on with the shot clock under 10. It's It's been very few. It has been very few in this game. And, you know, Purdue is normally a team that, again, scores in the 70s, 80s, you know, I, I believe the record for Matt Painter is 64-2 and two when they've scored over 80 points. And again, it's a team that he talked about his ability to coach offense. But this Purdue team defensively is special. Under nine and a half to go. Purdue's lead is eight. And a nice move there by Cam Fletcher. Yeah, nice. By Cam to avoid the charge. Getting downhill, attacking the basket. Leonard Hamilton is raving about him, says he's a warrior. Will go to battle with Cameron Fletcher any day. Fans wanted to travel and a turnover. Cleveland inside, and one! I believe it's better that the fans didn't get the call that they wanted, because if they had, it would have been a dead ball turnover. We see Cameron Fletcher avoiding the charge. And then, after not getting the call, Florida State comes up with the turnover, getting out in transition, Mills to Cleveland. Cleveland with the finish, the flex, and an opportunity for his third and one on the evening. Matthew Cleveland with 16 points in this one. And rattles that one home. The kid from Atlanta having himself a nice night with 17 points. And it's a three-point game. And Cleveland played his best in the biggest games for Florida State last year. So recognizing that this is a big game, Cleveland stepping it up. And Leonard Hamilton got to find a way to get him consistently doing this on a regular basis. That Painters Purdue Boilermakers took the giant leap to number five in the country. Speed inside, Edie and one. And he is pumped up. Now, Boo, you've seen a lot more Zach Edie than I have. Have you ever seen him this emotional in the game? We've seen a number of opportunities where he scored through the contact, opportunities for and one, but letting out that emotion afterwards. Really demonstrative. And showing it off here tonight with 21 points. Mentioned his career high is 30. I mean, there's just no, no question that when he gets it in a certain position, he's almost impossible to stop. Cleveland collects on the move, and that one was off the mark. That was the first mistake we've seen Cleveland make. One more to Cameron Fletcher, who has a wide open look on the baseline, gives them a better opportunity. Again, a chance for FSU to cut the lead. It's a five-point game, and that one 
Rattles home for Mills, and now it's a three-point game. We talked about Mills being relatively quiet in this game. If Florida State can get him going down the stretch to go along with Cleveland and Green, they can absolutely make this interesting here on their home court. Brandon Newman charged with the foul, break in the action, and it's a three-point game. Out the foul trouble against Smarty, 46% from three. And then over on ESPN after Ohio State do coach the walking double-double. Trace Jackson Davis is a relentless offensive rebounder, loves to catch the ball off the right block. He gets it there. He goes to work. Move. We look forward to more of our doubleheader coming up after we go final. Gentlemen, and here in Tallahassee, a good one. Number five, Purdue, getting all they can handle. A lot of conversation on the sideline. Cameron Fletcher, Stan Jones, all getting involved in the mix for Florida State. And that's really where Florida State has struggled this year. It's really from a leadership standpoint. Who is that guy? Who is that veteran that has been through the fire and can lead these younger players to really what the culture of Florida State has been? In my opinion, I think that Cameron Fletcher is that guy. I sent a text message to his high school head coach and mentor, Tony Irons, earlier today. You saw Cam and I talking about this pregame. Message today, not sure if you got it. He said, I got it. Put you a message today, not sure if you got it. He said, I got it loud and clear. I felt like you were heckling him. It, it might have been a little bit of heckling. <laughs> but at the same time, it's because it's because I care. I understand. It's because I care. I and again, this program is a very proud program and tradition. And Leonard Hamilton needs that guy to be able to step up. I think Cam is that guy. Smith not able to hit. And there's Fletcher with the rebound. And Fletcher with nine rebounds. That's one off his career high. Mills trying to turn the corner. And it's poked away. Edie secures it. Costly turnover for the Knowles. An opportunity to possibly tie the game with a three and you walk away with the empty possession. Side off the glass and in. Pretty nice move there from Fletcher Lawyer, putting it on the deck. Especially for a guy who's supposed to be just a shooter, recognizing the defender running him off the three-point line, getting downhill and getting a bucket when his team needs it. That was a little strong for Cam Fletcher, and now Smith back the other way. And that one off the glass and in. The great Smith with the deuce, and all of a sudden, it's a seven-point game. Amazing to think you look at this lot on the court for Purdue and you ask the question who has the most rebounds? Braden Smith has nine. Yeah. And he leads all the Boilermakers. Yeah. All right, my bad. The, the, the little big fella. That, okay. Little big fella getting in the mix. That means he's slacking only six boards for him tonight. So, I mean, if the seven board guy's not going to go get it. <laughs> I just got the side eyed yo man point guard. <laughs> look. State. You knew it was coming. You used to working with, you know, <laughs> those shooting guards, the power forwards. Smith inside and maybe score that one. No. Nope. Jeffrey Anderson was 
speaking to the Purdue bench. It will be a foul. Great officiating crew, by the way, tonight. Led by, of course, Bert Smith, Jeffrey Anderson, my guy John Gaffney. I mean, a, a really good group, personable group, willing to talk to players. And as much as I, you know, talk about my guy Bert Smith pregame, I love him to death. I keep telling him I'm going to crush him on air. But he's such a good official, I have a hard time doing it. I want to, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my guy. Great group we had tonight. I think Jeffrey Anderson did a good job as everybody on the Purdue bench was jumping up and down because McLeod touched it. And Jeffrey Anderson very demonstratively said, no, it was still going up as he pinned it to the glass. And they get a foul on Morton as he was a little too close to Darren Green. Green, who had a tremendous first half, he's been quiet since the break. That's the first. Green providing that scoring for Florida State, a necessary go-to guy. Is that sustainable? Can he be that guy for them this season? I mean, over the last couple of seasons, we realized that Taylor Mills is going to be inconsistent. He's going to have his games where he goes to 20-plus. He's going to have his games where he struggles to get the double figures. If Florida State can add another score, consistent score, that would help. Oh, nice. Hey. Just great look as Smith finds mm. Edie. It doesn't get any easier than that, right? You can see Brayden Smith is comfortable amongst the trees. <laughs> what we saw from Florida State to start the game. But there's a difference in their pressure after 36 minutes of game time in comparison to in the first four. And McLeod rejects that one and it's out of bounds. Purdue leading it by seven on the road. 3.51 to go. Yeah, 9.15 Eastern. It'll be North Carolina and Indiana, and following us, Michigan State and Notre Dame over on the U. It'll be Boston College and Nebraska. Could come down to your alma mater at Nebraska tonight. Oh what happens if it's close? You know, 7-7 is the tie. Yep. We've seen it multiple times. And Earl Grant, the fellow's going to have to deliver. Yeah. The ACC came into today with a 5-3 lead in the challenge. From way downtown, Lawyer, a little strong. Another stop for Florida State. This is where they're going to have to make their push. Three and a half remaining. Can't continue to allow Purdue to be able to play with the seven-point cushion. Cleveland jump stop in the paint, lost the handle. Cleveland and Green have been their offense in this game. Shot clock at six. Cleveland, a little short. Hesitates, ball fake, and the ED flips it up and in. He's got a game high 25 points and he's played a game high 32 minutes. The fitness is really impressive. Almost as impressive as the hands. That is a difficult situation to put a seven foot four guy in, but he continues to be successful. Yeah, the hands are the hands are good. He gets it. 
in a certain spot, he, he's able to secure it almost every time, it seems. But, you know, there have been a number of times where there is really like, why would Brandon Brady Smith pass him the basketball right there? But he continues to make it look so easy where you say, well, that's why, because he's got great hands. Mills gets it back, fires it up. And the tip ends up with Mills trying to scoop it home. Couldn't do it, and Edie the rebound. Florida State's had his chances here, just unable to be able to get it to go down, and that's been the struggle for the Knowles throughout this young season is finishing basketball games. Had a 19-point lead on this floor against Florida. Ended up surrendering that lead and losing that game. And they just got an offensive foul on Edie. Zach Edie talking to Jeffrey Anderson, wanting to know he was pulled. He was not trying to run and create the contact. He was pulled into the contact. As you see, Edie setting the screen. Caleb Mills tries to go under. And <laughs> Caleb Mills does a great job of selling that because yeah, he, he does pull Edie into that foul. Green, shot contested, and a big rebound from Gillis. So Purdue basketball under 90 seconds to go, and the lead is nine. Smith gets bumped. And right now, Matt Painter having a conversation with his point guard, trying to get him to understand time and score. With a lead and a full shot clock, there's no reason to penetrate and go downhill Fortunately for Smith, he was bailed out. But Matthew Painter, who was a very tall guard himself, not a big man, he was a guard, but he's not happy with his point guard. And again, he's a freshman. <laughs> Matt Painter has the ability, though, to deliver the criticism and be angry and also funny at the same time. Like he's delivering the criticism and all the coaches, and you can see their radio crew and some of the other people, plus the officials, are smiling. <laughs> yes, well, because it's funny. It's funny to us. Yeah. It might not be funny to Braden Smith. Fair enough. But it's definitely funny to us. But, I mean, again, but Matt Painter, of course, is a great coach, but he's right. Yeah. Don't go in there. There's no reason nothing good happens for you. Yeah, you're up nine. There's no, there's no need to stop the clock. Kick out Cleveland, that's a three, and count it. And that's the evolution of Matthew Cleveland's game. If he can add that consistently, his game goes to the next level when he becomes a premier scorer for the Florida State Seminoles with a consistent three-point shot. So the lead is eight, 107 to go, timeout on the floor. And again, Michigan State and Notre Dame coming up. 71-63. Doesn't get any easier for Leonard Hamilton's group. Their next game is against Virginia. Do you have that? I will be there on the call in Charlottesville for that game. Look at Virginia. Then back at home against Louisville, who has struggled. Winless on the season thus far. USC Upstate. St. John's, Notre Dame. Both here at the tuck so after the road game at virginia four straight home games for florida state and if you're leonard hamilton regardless of the outcome of this game i believe that you can take away some positives of this and again once in the acc there are no moral victories but you're playing against one of the best teams in the country and against maybe the best player in the country and zach Eady right now and for the way that florida state's competed in this game if you clean up some small mistakes this is a winnable game for you. Yeah, there were opportunities where they took the lead, opportunities where they could have kept it tighter. And again, I think one of the topics 
you look at Baba Miller, who's a freshman from Spain, suspended for the first 16 games of the year due to a, a travel benefit that he received. And so this will be now, what, seven more games he's still going to sit out. And he'll probably end up being one of their best players. 16 games is a long A lot. Time. That is a lot for, I mean, again, that travel benefit had to have had some extra bonuses or something. I mean, because if it was just the travel, 16 games is a long time. That is half the season. Speed inside, Fletcher the deuce. And it's back to eight, the full court pressure. Newman double team. Newman looking for some help. And he gets fouled. Foul call. Morton was actually standing right in front of Burke Smith trying to call the timeout. As he saw his teammate under duress. Six to go, and Newman knocks it down. Talking about Painter, about all the kits and the different sneakers they wear. Brandon Newman's rocking some pretty sweet green Kobe's. Those are the Mamba I believe. I like those. Yeah, very nice. I'm colorblind, though. I think the Mama Cedars were all black. I didn't know they were green until you said it. <laughs> Probably should have discussed that pre -game. You know what? You, you got to tell me these things. <laughs> that is totally fair. That is on me. I led you right into trouble. <laughs> I probably should have told you I was colorblind at first. There they are. There are a pair of sneakers as a kid that you grew up. They, it hadn't quite exploded the way it has now. I mean, Nike was getting big and Jordans, etc. The Air Force One. Okay. Poster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With Moses Malone. Absolutely. You know, the, what, the whole team yeah. changed my life. I became a sneakerhead the first time I saw the Air Force One. And I'll be honest with you, Boog, I probably have 100 pair of Air Force Ones right now. Wow. And simply because that is what brought me into the sneaker game. Okay. So I like the dunks and I the see, Jordan 1. I see you rocking the fly dunks right now. Ooh, hoo, hoo, my man got a nice shoe closet. <laughs> I'm going to have to, when I, I'm going to send you a video of mine when I get home. But the dunks. And the Jordan one, yep. oh, my wife can't tell the difference between the two. Right. They have very similar look. And the thing is, but before Michael Jordan wore Jordans, he wore dunks in the NBA. So that's the thing, because when he first started playing, Jordans were not graded yet. They were still being manufactured. He did wear them. As I did not know that. He did wear them his rookie year, but he did not wear them to start the rookie year. So it was later in his rookie year when he started wearing them. He would wear dunks in games prior to that. Oh, wow. The lead is 10. Oh, and score the basket. Matt Painter's a little frustrated. Well, as a coach, you want to make sure that your team finishes the game the right way. And again, at this point, twos don't really hurt you, but you don't want to add the free throw by fouling and give them an opportunity to the three yep. and stop the clock. ED back in. But again, it's another example. Edie's back in, and 
he can make free throws. Yes. So you don't have to take him out down the stretch and be fearful of your big guy not be getting fouled and not being able to go to the line and take care of business. March it down to the other end as Brandon Newman will get a chance to shoot. So Purdue will escape and improve to 7 and 0. Oh. Matt Painter's team will head back to West Lafayette here tonight. I'll be honest, I was not expecting this result. Florida State definitely competed here on their home floor, and not that I didn't expect for them to. But the way Purdue was playing, I knew this would be a tough task for the Seminoles, but Leonard Hamilton had his team prepared for this action tonight. Too much Zach Eady. But outside of that, you've got to give the Seminoles a lot of credit for the way they competed here on their home floor. Yeah, big time. Nice night for Darren Green, Cleveland as well. House off the mark, out of bounds. And that'll do it. And Purdue improves to seven in a row oh, with a road win, 79-69 the final. Corey enjoyed it. Great hat now with you, my man. No doubt. Matt Painter and company pick up the win up next. Michigan State and Notre Dame. Let's head out to South Bend. Brian Custer, Jordan Cornette. Fellas, take it away.